I'm still working on the Manchester School of Embroidery book and these are all the motifs I, I made of the colour but I was using all my leftover threads so some of them are unbleached and some of them are bleached and I've more or less decided what I'm going to do so I started again and I made several of the motifs I'm working my way through and I'm trying to make enough to cover a lampshade so if people wonder how much thread it takes to make a project that small ball is what's left after crocheting all that and the other one is a full size ball so you can get quite a few motifs after just one ball so this time I'm going to show you how to make this motif it's a lot easier than that one was it's less confusing and after that I'll be showing you how to make this one and that one so this is the lampshade I'm going to cover I got it at our local charity shop and they didn't charge me anything for it as it's a little bit dented broken I'll be taking the rings off and making a new cover and I'll show you how I do that so again we go to the antiques pattern library and I'll choose Irish crochet and here's a PDF So I work down the pages and there's the first star and this is the one we're going to make now just going to enlarge the text and there we've got the instructions so it says to make a ring as for the first star and work 24 double into it and then chain four, miss one, one double, repeat from the little star 11 times more. And then the second row is five chain, one double into the next four chain and go around like that. Then it says make a cord of three strands in the padding thread and work it five double into each of the five chain. This completes the center. So we'll get along with that and then I'll show you the next part so as I've decided what my project's going to be and I had also run out of thread so I needed to order some I decided to make the whole project in thread number 80 and I'm using number 10 thread again as the cord also I wanted everything to look uniform and I didn't want things too raised so what I decided to do was to when I make this the ring the inner ring instead of using cord to wrap so number 10 thread to wrap around the crochet hook and then crochet around it I'm actually using the number 80 thread and then crocheting on I do use the cord for the other parts of the project but the reason I'm using the same thread as I crochet with for the center ring is so that it's a little bit flatter so it's not as raised and I think it looked better on the lampshade. I ordered this thread from Ken Mare Lace. I don't know if they supply internationally, but it's a very, very good price. I think it was five euros and fifty cents per bobbin. And good. And one good thing is they also have a, th a number hundred thread available. So I've ordered. I, I bought some of that, and I'll be using that in joining up. The thread I use is just the, the, the traditional DMC or Anchor. I like those brands. They're made specifically for lace making. I find that other threads are slightly more glazed and s s silkier and I think it doesn't come out so well 
when you're making crochet but I suppose it depends on what look you're going for but if you want thread and you can't find it I suggest you get in touch with Ken Mare Lace they're very friendly and accommodating and you'll find them online they've got a little museum there and they do specialize in, in actual Ken Mare lace which is a needle lace which is slightly different from crochet lace but they also have all the supplies for crochet lace limerick lace and so on so I'm making every single motif from the book exactly in the same way so that they all look uniform so that means the same thread the same the same diameter for the ring and so on so we're going to start by winding the thread 15 times round the end of the hook slide it off gently stick the crochet hook through the center and now we're off this particular motif worked out really well it wasn't awkward it wasn't difficult and the numbers came out so now I'm going to make 24 single crochet into the ring when I get halfway through the number so tw after 12 single crochet I check to make sure I've got at least half of the ring left so that I've got enough space for all the stitches so you can move these stitches on the ring you can slide them and that way you, you ensure you've got enough room to make the amount of stitches needed so I've done the 24 stitches make a slip stitch into the first one now it says chain four and miss one. So that one. And go round. So I just finish into the last stitch and then I always make sure that I've got 12 loops so 4 chain, slip 1, single crochet into the next one out of 24 stitches would give you 12 loops so 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 so I've got one missing So I've gone round and I've got 12 loops. Now the next round is chain 5 and a single crochet into the loop and work your way round.
I'm going to count to make sure I've got 12 loops. Yes. So that's it. So there's 12 loops. And now it's time to introduce the chord. I'm going to show you how to fix the chord with three threads instead of four. Normally I always do it with four because it's easier to attach and I'll show you how to attach it when you're only using three chords. So you don't need too much cord for this. I've got about 18 inches here, that should be enough. So because there's a loose thread there, I can't just use the loop because this might unravel itself. So when I'm using three threads, I leave a bit sticking out here and I crochet round at about the first inch. So I've left an inch sticking out and I'll be cutting that or sewing it in later. So onto each loop we're making five single crochet. I'm halfway through so I adjust the cord, make sure it's all smooth, that there are no bits of thread sticking out. So I'm at the end of the row, I make a slip stitch into the first single crochet into the first loop. And now it's a question of adjusting the cord and making sure the, the work will lie smooth, flat. So I tend to tighten it first and then I loosen it. The, slip, the stitches should slip over the cord. There we are. I'll cut this little bit off now. I crocheted it into the last, when I did the last loop. It shouldn't become detached, it should be fine like that. Now I'm going to drop the cord. And the pattern says work 12 treble into the next 12 double turn. So the first treble, which is what we would call a double, is so I chain three. That'll be the first one. So for the next one, wrap the thread round the hook. Stick it into the next stitch. Pull the thread through once. 
pull the thread through the two loops and a third time so I make 12 of these in this motif everything fitted really well there were no problems or having to guess how to do it or guess where you think you've gone wrong so there we have 12 double crochet on the ring and then it says turn chain 3 but I prefer to chain 3 first before I turn and then 10 treble into the next lot so don't make a stitch in the very very first loops because that is part of that three chain so the three chain would be one so, so now we make 10 double So there we have the next row complete. For the next row it's again chain three and turn and now make nine double crochet along the row. So again you skip the first one. So that's the last one. Now what you do is you pass your ball through the loop and pull tight but pull tight gently because otherwise this will knot up and then you have to undo it which can be quite difficult with such thin thread. There we go. So now we have to repeat this, what they call a ray, all the way around. So we'll have five of these. So for the next one, stick your hook through the first next for the first available stitch pull the thread through but then adjust it so that it's slightly bigger than the length of the ray that way it won't be too tight and then we chain three as the first stitch and we continue around so 12 double crochet followed by a row of 10 followed by a row of 9 and you work your way around until you get back to the cord so this is the five rays done and as you can see it all curls up on itself and that is why cord is used in Irish crochet because very thin thread when it gets crocheted kind of curls in on itself and doesn't keep its shape so when I read the instructions it says this brings you to where you left the cord work double stitch over it along the three sides of each ray taking care to turn the corners squarely fasten off overcast the cord at the back so what I need to do is crochet along the edges of each ray over the cord so I'm not going to put too many stitches in 
I'm going to put in about two for each row and then when I get to the corner I'll put three stitches in and then along the top I'll be putting one in for each stitch and then again along the side I'll be putting in about six stitches so I've reached another corner here so I'll put three stitches into the corner Now I'll go down along the side again. I'll encapsulate, I'll include the thread that I led down the side into it so that gets crocheted in with the cord. Like I said, you can put as many stitches in as you like, but I think too many stitches might make it look a little bit puffed up. When I get to the bottom I will I crochet between the two rays. I put one stitch in, I don't put more than one because otherwise it won't lie flat. So once I've done that I square off the edges I stretch the cord and make sure it can lie flat and so I carry on around the edge of the second petal a uh, second ray as it's a star Don't put too many stitches between the the different rays because it'll bunch up and it won't lie as flat. So here I've been round the whole motif with the cord. So now it's just a question of fastening off. I always leave a good length of thread so that I can sew the ends of the motif of, of the cord in. So I make sure the motif can lie flat before I cut the cord because you can adjust the cord before you put it into a permanent position so I cut this end off and these bits I often use to make a center so I never they never go to waste really I think uh, lace making, crochet lace making is one of the most economical and cheapest hobbies you can have. So these are the second star motifs from the Manchester Book of Embroidery and I'll be using them in a lampshade. <laughs> 